How's it going everyone? In today's video, I wanted to go over how to create a WordPress block. So if you've never done this before, this is the place to start. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I do WordPress tutorials on Wednesdays. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get started and jump right into it. All right, so first thing is first, we're going to need to install a new command line tool called Create, create Guten Block. So this is going to give us everything that we need to get started and it seriously is the fastest way to get up and running. So npm install dash g create guten block. And this is going to do everything from getting our webpack configuration going to installing a plugin. So it does quite a bit for us. So let's clear that out and let's go into our plugins folder. So WP content and plugins. If we list out everything in here, we don't have any plugins. So what we need to do is create one. So create Guten block and we're going to call this posts block. And this will create a new plugin for us and it's going to get everything ready to go. So once this is done installing all of its NPM packages, we'll jump into actually creating the block. All right, so now that that is done, we can go over to our plugins and then activate our posts block that was just installed for us. Now let's go back to our code and let's do exactly what it says right down here. So we're gonna CD into posts block and run NPM start. And it's really as simple as that. Now it's watching with uh, Webpack, and so anytime that we write any JSX or anything like that, it's going to compile um, everything for us. So if we look inside of our post block plugin, it gives us a bunch of stuff here, but we're really going to pay attention to the source folder and then the block folder. So inside of block.js, that's where we're going to actually be, that's where we're going to be dictating what this block actually does. So let's go in there and let's close my terminal for now and let's close the file tree. So this is kind of um, the basics of a block. It gives us register block type, it has all of the information for it, and it gives us some basic information um, about it. So the title, the icon, the category, the keywords, etc. But the main places that we're going to be sticking around is between edit and save. So let me just delete these comments, give us a little bit of room here. But between these two functions, we're going to be creating our post block. So the first thing that I want to mention is that we're going to be creating a dynamic block. So what we need to do here is we just simply need to delete everything that's inside of this save and just we need to return null. This will tell WordPress that we want to create a dynamic block and not a static block. So now that we have that, we're going to want to get rid of everything that's inside of this return. And now we basically have a blank slate to create our block. And as you've probably already guessed, we're going to be creating a block that displays some posts. And I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do that with a twist. I want to make sure that the user can um, select which category those posts are coming from and then how many posts show up. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a dropdown that is a um, list of all the categories that they can pick from and then an input box where they can put a number of how many uh, posts they want to show up. So if you're familiar with React at all, uh, Gutenberg has something called attributes and I like to think of it as state. So we can declare in here the things that we are going to be working with. So we're going to use categories and we have to declare, this is really the only um, thing that's required inside of these attributes is the type. So the first one is going to be an object and then we're going to have the selected category. Selected category. And that is just going to be a type of a string. So this will make a little bit more sense as we start to use it, but we typically need to declare these things first. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make an API call to fetch all of the categories that exist on the site. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if the attributes aren't there, so if not props.attributes.categories, that doesn't exist, then we want to 
do wp.api fetch, and that has an object in there. And that takes a URL. And we do wp-json slash wp slash v2 slash categories. So that will get us what we want there. And then so once we have that, we want to do dot then. And with those categories, we want to set the state, or we want to set the categories. So we're going to use set props dot set attributes. And we're going to, um, that's a function, so we need to then give it what we care about here, so categories. Oops, and we're gonna set that to categories. So when the thing is uh, first launched, it's going to go out and get a set of categories and just simply set it here. So nothing too crazy there. Well, after that gets all of those, let's just um, console log that, just to make sure that everything's working. So let's get our attributes, or props.attributes, and then we need to make sure that this returns something or it's gonna throw an error, so let's just return true for now. So back in our browser, we're going to refresh, and let's see what it gives us. So the first thing that it gives us is an empty object, which is expected. And then the second thing it gives us is a, an, ob an object that has an array of categories in there. So it eventually came back, but we did get this guy here. So what we have to do is we have to account for that inside of our edit function. So let's check first if there's not any uh, props.attributes dot categories, if that simply hasn't been set yet, we can safely assume that this is um, the return, um, that it's still loading. So let's just do loading. Let's fix that linting error. Oh, and it's props dot attributes. The other thing that it could come back with is, well, if we have uh, props dot attributes, and uh, categories and the props dot attributes dot categories um, has a length that is equal to zero. So let's say they've deleted all the categories on their site. We don't want to just blow up the, the site. So let's make sure that we have a message there. No categories found. Please add some. All right, so that takes care of those, both of those other scenarios. And the last scenario that we have is, well, if everything's good. So let's jump into doing that. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to do a new div. And we're gonna have two things in here. We're gonna have a select. And we're also gonna have an input. Type is equal to text. So we're gonna to need to fill these out with, this is going to be what is going to give us that number of how many posts per page we wanna see, and this is going to be a select of all the categories. So let's first start by adding some of those options because we don't wanna do all those manually. So inside of here, let's do props.attributes.categories, and we're going to map over those. Let's get the category. And we're going to want to return inside of here with an option. And so that option is going to need a value. Let's bring this up just a little bit. And that's going to be the category ID. We're also going to need the key and that's going to be category.id as well. And then we need to give something that's actually human readable here. So let's give category.name. So let's take a look and see if everything's going according to plan over here. So we refresh the page and it says loading. And then we have a dropdown. So we have 
another category, special category, sports category, uncategorized. So it looks like everything is going well there. Um, however, we need to actually get this to save. So if we select sports and then publish our page, and we refresh it. It's going to load and then it's going to be back to another category. So what we need to do is make sure that that state is saved and on every time that we change what this drop down is. So let's go back and we need to create an on change here. So on change, we need to do a function called update category. And we're going to create that here in a second. So let's go up and do a new function and we'll call it update category. That's going to take the event in set attributes. And we're going to take the selected category. We're going to make that equal to a E dot target dot value. So let's Listening, opening space. Yeah, this linter thing is awesome. Set attributes is not defined. Yes, because it's coming from props. All right. So every time that they change that select, it should um, run this function, which will update our state. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that that value is then represented when we load the page. So nice thing is, is we can just do props dot attributes dot selected category. So this is yelling at me because it doesn't like that I'm using on change here I'd rather have me use on blur but I was running into problems with that. So we're going to use on change instead. Let's go back. Reload the page. And if it's at another category, but we select sports, we hit update and we refresh the page. We have sports. So that is great news. Now let's do the same thing over here. So if we need to create an input here, and so we're going to do on, let's do on blur. On blur, we're going to be doing update posts per page. And same thing here, let's just copy and paste this. And we're going to do update posts per page. And instead of this, oh, we need to create an attribute for that. So let's do posts per page. And that type it's just going to be a string as well. We're just going to default to that. I know it's a number, but this is the way we're going to do it. So set attributes, we need to get the posts per page. And we're going to fix this linting error here. All right. So now that we have that, we need to say, well, on load, we just need to make sure that the value is equal to props dot attributes dot posts per page. So let's go back, refresh. And then we're going to set this to four, hit update, refresh. And we've got four. So we have the two main ingredients here for our block. Um, Let's actually create some sort of label for these. So this is going to be um, posts per page label and label here is going to be for the category. Let's take a look at that. Okay, awesome. So now we have at least a little bit of a reminder of what's going on here. So next thing is, well, this won't actually translate to anything on the front end. If we view this page, it's a whole lot of nothing. So let's actually create the markup for this and 
take a look at what that process looks like. Since everything is going to be done in PHP now, because we are creating a dynamic block, we need to go over to our file tree and find init.php inside of our source folder. I'm going to double click in there, and we're going to look for a function called register block type. It has a couple of things in here, but we need to add something else. We need to add render callback. We're going to call this render posts block. And then we need to declare that. So we're going to function render posts block. And here's kind of the cool part is now we have attributes. Attributes can't spell. So everything that we were declaring inside of our state or our attributes, we now have access to. So if we dump and die attributes, we can go to our page and now we have access to everything. So we have our categories, which we're not going to use, but we do have these two guys down here at the bottom, selected category and post per page. So let's go back here and let us start off by creating a new variable called posts we're going to get posts and we have our um, list of arguments here the first one is going to be category and we want the category that they selected so attributes selected category and the posts per page is equal to attributes post per page. So pretty cool. So let's take that and let's loop over it. Posts as post. And we're going to need to return all of our data as a string. So what we're going to do is a handy little function here. will be start. And we're going to do o return ob get clean. And so that's going to take everything inside of here, turn it into a string for us. So what we want to do is we want to echo out some h2s or nh2 for each post. And it's going to be post, post title. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make some p tags here. It's going to be for our post excerpt. And let's also get the post thumbnail. And we're going to give it post ID. And for good measure here, let's also echo out an HR. So let's take a look at this. So if we go over here, hit refresh, we now have four posts. It's got their thumbnails and all that. So we know that that's working. Let's make sure that our categories are working. So let's go get category list, get the category list. The separator is going to be a comma space. Parents, just an empty string. And this is going to be post ID. Let's do that and save there. So we're in sports, sports, sports. So everything is looking good. We have created a new block. We have used create Guten block to create this guy for us and get Webpack going and the whole plugin. We have also created a way for us to select what category this is coming from. We've also been able to select how many posts per page are showing up here. And then we've taken that and we've gotten everything into PHP to make our block dynamic. So we can actually change the markup and all that and not have it blow up on us. So I hope you learned something in this. If you did, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment and all that good stuff. And um, I will see you in the next one.